This reading is from a censored number 129. And before I begin the uh, the main article, I'd like to read a couple of scriptures. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that gives to the rich shall surely come to want. Proverbs 22, verse 16. He that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Proverbs 28, verse 20. As the nail sticks to the stone, so sin sticks to buying and selling. Ecclesiastes 27, verse 2. And now the article. Abolish America's Violent and Corrupt Police State by Michael J. Tamil. In June 2013, my girlfriend and I went to Rockaway Beach, New York. As we walked along the boardwalk, I couldn't help but notice all the cops hanging around. They were literally all over the place. One was busily writing a ticket on someone's car, while the others were just standing around. My girlfriend was born and raised in France, and goes there three times a year to visit her family. So I asked her if cops are all over the beaches in her country. Her response was, no, you never see them. Later that year, I went to France with her for the first time. We visited a few other countries as well, and sure enough, no cops on the beaches and a much smaller overall police presence. This reminded me of a guy being interviewed on a radio talk show a couple of years ago. He mentioned that when he went to Denmark for several months, Thirty days went by before he even saw a policeman. Yet in this country, you know, the land of the free and the home of the brave, you, you see them all the time. How come? Do we really need to be surrounded by all this oppression? Personally, I'm offended by it. We have the world's third largest police force behind China and India. There are 870,000 law enforcement officers and over 17,000 law enforcement agencies nationwide. This is not even counting all the different kinds of federal police. We have municipal, municipal police, county police, state police, college campus police, housing police, and transit police. We have cops patrolling in cars, vans, trucks, and helicopters. We have cops on motorcycles, on horseback, on boats, on bicycles, and on foot. And if you think that our gargantuan, in-your-face, all-over-the-place police forces are there to protect you, then think again. Liberals stand silent, while police psychopaths brutalize children, grandmothers, murder, double amputees in wheelchairs, break all over this country, videos and cell phone cameras, along with the reluctant corporate media, they are showing us what stupid, corrupt, evil thugs cops really are. A number of studies have shown that this goes way beyond a few apples. In his September 2013 article, Police Are More Dangerous to the Public Than Our Criminals, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for Economic Policy under Ronald Reagan, an associate editor of the Wall Street Journal, said it best. At the state and local level, every American faces brutal, armed psychopaths known as the police. The law and order conservatives and compassionate barge into the wrong homes, murder the family dogs, terrify the occupants, pointing their automatic assault weapons in the faces of small children. 
If a person Googles police brutality videos, he will discover that there are more videos than can be watched in a lifetime. And these, these are only those of police brutality that are witnessed and caught on video. <clears throat> According to the Department of Justice's Bureau of Justice Statistics, 4,813 people were killed during an arrest or restraint process by police between January 2003 and December 2009. More than 4,486 soldiers died in the Iraq war from 2003 to 2002. Of these uh, civilians killed, 42 were white, 32 were black, 20% were Hispanic, 61% or 2,931 were classified as homicides by law enforcement personnel. But this statistic is understated because it only covers 47 states along with the District of Columbia and only includes arrest fatalities. It doesn't include how many people cops kill without arresting them. In comparison, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund reports that 1,501 policemen died in the line of duty over the past 10 years. And while cops and the corporate media like to emphasize how dangerous police work is and how cops put their lives on the line for us every day, a study by the Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics pointed out that when it comes to dangerous jobs, police officers don't even make the top 10. Loggers, fishermen, construction workers, farmers, and trash collectors have far more dangerous jobs. The study also points out that almost half of all on-duty cops who die each year are killed in routine traffic accidents. In other words, they don't die in a high-speed chase or from shooting it out with the bad guys. American cops are also trigger-happy. Der Spiegel reported that Germany's entire police force, nearly 300,000, fired a total of 85 shots in all of 2011. 49 of these shots were warning shots. Last year, police in Iceland shot a man and killed him for the first time ever a robbery suspect. In 2011, only two people were killed by police in England and Wales. But in April 2012, in one incident alone, Los Angeles, California cops fired over 90 shots that led to the death of a 19-year-old man. A study by the National Safety Council reported that you are eight times more likely to be killed by a policeman than by a terrorist. A 2011 study by the World Justice Project, a bipartisan independent group with honorary chairs that include Supreme Court Justices Anthony M. Kennedy, Stephen Breyer, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, reported that Americans have experienced more unfair physical abuse by police in America than in Russia. The study further states that compared to other countries in North America and Western Europe, the United States ranks third to last in checks and balances on the power of government officials and absence of corruption, and second to last in access to civil and criminal justice and in the protection of due process, freedom of speech, and other fundamental rights.
Our police are like mutant ninja turtles. In a June 8, 2014 article, the New York Times reported that during the Obama administration alone, police departments have received 93,763 machine guns, 533 planes and helicopters, 432 mine-resistant ambush-protected armored vehicles, 435 other types of armored vehicles, and 44,900 night vision pieces. Most of this stuff was used in the wars with Iraq and Afghanistan. Many SWAT teams, special weapons and tactics, are trained by current and former personnel from special forces units, like the Navy SEALs. This kind of training emphasizes shooting first and asking questions later which is great for facing enemy soldiers on a battlefield, but disastrous for dealing with civilians in one's own country. Ask yourself the following. Why are cops at road construction sites just standing around or sitting in their cars? Why are cops used to direct traffic? especially on quieter streets that an elderly retired person with a handheld stop sign could do just as easily. Why do cops usually show up for medical emergencies? Why, since the 1990s, are police arresting, tasing, and putting school children as young as five years old in handcuffs for acting up in class? If you acted up in class when I went to school, you were sent to the principal's office or given detention. Why are SWAT teams, originally created in the 1960s to handle violent crisis situations like hostage taking and mass shootings, breaking into people's homes and businesses, no-knock raids to bust up poker games, terrorize doctors for practicing alternative medicine, cracking down on unlicensed barbershops and serving petty warrants. SWAT raids have skyrocketed from around 3,000 in 1980 to over 50,000 a year today. In my humble opinion, the reason is that we have too many cops, so they have to invent stuff for them to do in order to justify their phony baloney jobs, which is getting the rest of us injured and killed. This includes innocent little children like seven-year-old Ayanna Stanley Jones, who was accidentally shot and killed by Michigan police in a 2010 no-knock raid while she was sleeping. In May 2014, a 19-month-old baby in Georgia wound up with a hole in his chest third-degree burns when a SWAT team threw a flashbang grenade that landed in his crib. They raided the house over a $50 drug sale, and the county is refusing to pay the child's medical bills. There also are some cases where police get killed by armed civilians in no-knock pre-dawn raids who are too tired and too confused to realize it's the cops. When this happens, the civilian gets charged with murder and goes to jail. But if the cop kills the civilian, it's, oh, hey, they were just doing their job. Police try to justify their brutality by claiming that they were in fear of their safety. The prevailing mentality goes something like this. I thought he was reaching for a gun instead of a wallet. 
So I had to shoot him. Or why take chances knocking on the door to serve a warrant when we can break it down, armed to the teeth in full body armor, it's safer that way. Why do cops think that their safety is more important than ours? Aren't they supposed to protect the public? If a policeman enters someone's home and gets killed, that's the risk that goes with the job. Firemen take the same risk. Should a fireman refuse to save a person from a burning building because it's too dangerous? So, to the police I say, if you go around breaking down doors in no-knock raids, people are going to get killed. You might even have the wrong house, which happens quite a bit. So knock on the fucking door! The safety of the people that you are supposed to protect and serve comes first. Cops are first and foremost a standing army. They are professional soldiers. In many ways, our modern police forces are like the Praetorian Guard of the ancient Roman Empire. Praetorian Guardsmen didn't fight in wars like the regular army, nor endure its hardships. Instead, they were the Emperor's private henchmen, carrying out whatever whims he dictated. In the same way, today's cops enforce a plethora of unjust laws and regulations that serve the interests of corrupt politicians and the special interest groups that finance them. Policemen are the hired thugs of the rich and powerful who rule this country. Wealthy people have always needed large military police forces to protect what they have from the have-nots. Police forces do not serve the interests of the poor and the middle class. Their purpose is to stifle dissent, keep us in line, not to protect us. In fact, the courts have ruled in cases like Warren v. District of Columbia 1981 and Castle Rock v. Gonzalez 2005 that the police aren't obligated to protect anyone. They are only obligated to enforce the law which is supposed to protect the public in general. Crime has been dropping in this country for decades. The 2012 murder rate was the lowest in a century. Yet our police forces continue to grow and acquire more and more weapons of war. Could the reason be that we have the biggest discrepancy in wealth in the developed world? It truly boggles my mind that both liberals and conservatives are now asserting that cops aren't soldiers, so they shouldn't act like soldiers, or be equipped with military combat weapons like soldiers. I agree with the part about the military hardware, but as far as claiming that cops aren't soldiers, oh, come on! Most of them wear, wear uniforms. They have military ranks like sergeant and captain. Of course they are soldiers! But understanding what the police are is only the first step. The next step is what to do about them. Consider this. We call policemen officer. What does that make the rest of us? Privates? As is the case in the military. We are not permitted to disobey the officer, strike the officer, talk back to the officer, or to question the officer's authority. If we do, we can be arrested, beaten, and jailed. The last time I checked, the preamble to our Constitution still says, we the people, not we the privates. 
The police need to be reined in. Do away with laws like resisting arrest and eluding, which allows the police to trump up charges. We also need to put an end to the drug war and get rid of other victimless crime laws. This would easily cut police forces by 80%. Federal and state laws need to be passed that will put cops in jail for 10, 20 years without parole if they physically abuse or accidentally kill someone. If they intentionally murder someone, they should get life in prison without parole. If a cop even verbally abuses someone, they should lose their job. And any cop who arrests or threatens a citizen for filming him or her should go to prison for at least five years. Cops also shouldn't be allowed to violate traffic laws. In every state, undercover citizens should be deputized to monitor cops and provoke them to see how they react. If the cop gets violent or abusive, take away his badge and gun and arrest him right then and there. As it stands now, cops are rarely prosecuted for abusive behavior and murder. Instead, they are either put on administrative leave, on desk duty, or they just get fired. When they do go to jail, it's usually only for a year or two. Did it ever occur to the powers that be in Missouri that if they put Darren Wilson the cop who killed Michael Brown in jail instead of on desk duty and indicted him for murder, public outrage and protests would have been greatly reduced. Obviously, there are good policemen out there who save lives and try not to abuse their authority. My experience with the police has been both good and bad. But I have come to the in inescapable conclusion that the existence of a massive standing army that has nothing better to do than harass people for minor infractions and that stands ready to enforce any law no matter how unjust is inherently evil. Such a military institution must have a dehumanizing and brutalizing effect on all who participate in it. In other words, professional soldiers lose their humanity. They develop an us-versus-them mentality. They become ticking time bombs waiting to explode. The problem isn't that there aren't enough minority and women officers, or that enough policemen come from the communities they work in, or that their education and training is inadequate. The problem is the police force itself. Cops have been brutal, corrupt, and oppressive since their creation in the 19th century. Anyone who doesn't know that is either ignorant of, ignorant of history or downright delusional. To believe that a few reforms will stop cops from behaving like every standing army that has ever existed throughout history is magical thinking. There is no way to reform the police. So abolish them. Replace them with a citizen police force. A militia that serves for 30 days and then rotates back into their regular jobs. It would be like jury duty. A militia has always been considered inferior to professional full-time soldiers. But since cops deal with civilians and don't fight in wars, a militia would be far superior when it comes to law enforcement. However, some people can't handle 
having any kind of power, even for a little while. So the laws and controls I mentioned in the previous paragraph still need to be put in place. A small squad of full-time detectives could remain to investigate murders and other types of cases like arson and fraud. Let's face it. The biggest mistake we ever made as a nation is creating a standing army to function as a police force. It has become a cancer on our democracy, a festering sore that is eating away our freedom, a putrid mass of corruption that sees the public as mere objects to be pushed around, abused, and exploited. Unfortunately, this is the reality we have to deal with. So know your rights. You do have some left. Know the laws in your state when it comes to what cops can and cannot do. There are plenty of websites on the internet where you can learn how to handle cops in different situations. For example, if a cop starts asking you questions, immediately ask respectfully and politely Am I being detained or am I free to go? Contact your state and federal legislators and demand that laws giving police special rights and broad discretion when it comes to using deadly force be repealed. If you're on jury duty, don't automatically believe what the cops say. Numerous studies and government commissions have shown that cops lie like rugs. The New York Police Department even came up with a nifty name for it called test lying Also keep in mind that as a juror, you have the right not to find someone guilty if you feel the law is unjust. Look up jury nullification on the internet. The main thing to know is don't get loud and crazy with the cops and don't resist arrest even if the cop is 100% in the wrong. Don't let your pride blind you to the danger you are in. This is tragically what happened to Eric Garner the 400-pound Staten Island African-American who was killed by the New York, New York City Police Department. Well, New York uh, Police Department, not the city. By being put in a chokehold last July, Garner was right to tell the cops off for harassing him and it is illegal for cops in New York to use chokeholds. But it doesn't change the fact that Garner is dead. Dr. William J. Eisenman, editor and publisher of this newsletter, has often said, you can be right and you can be dead. So choose your battles wisely and you will most likely prevail. The end. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.